We focused on the syntax of how to implement an interface yesterday. So the idea of using the implements reserved word, specifying the name of the interface, comparable as a generic. So in the angle brackets, we have to specify exactly what we're gonna be comparing. We're gonna be comparing coins. And then at the end of this class, we actually implemented our compare to method, um, which we're already familiar with from the string class, behaves in the same way. If two things are equal, we return zero. Um, otherwise, if this object is greater than the other object, we return a positive integer. If this object is less than the other object, we return a negative integer. So we implemented compare to. One very reasonable thing is like, why do we need the comparable interface, right? We could have just written a compare to method in our coin class on our own. Um, why would we bother with this whole implements comparable thing? Um, so that's what I wanna focus on first today. Understanding the usefulness of this um, is important. So go ahead and open up the coin test class, um, which is already written in our BlueJ project. Um, in the coin test class, we create a, a new coin that represents a quarter. We create another new coin that represents a dime. We create another new coin that represents a nickel. We create a new empty array list and we add the quarter, the dime and the nickel to that array list. Um, and then we can print that list out. Here is why implementing the comparable interface is actually useful. Um, if we uncomment the two lines of code that were commented out, this line of code here, collections.sort. Collections is a class that's part of the Java standard library. It has a static method called sort, and it can sort a list of anything as long as the elements in that list are comparable. This is the power of interfaces, right? If we implement the comparable interface, we can take advantage of all sorts of other methods that are already written that can interoperate with things that are comparable, even though they know nothing about our specific class. The sort methods of the collections class was written decades ago. We wrote the coin class yesterday, <laughs> and yet it works because we implement the interface. The sort method knows nothing about coins or strings or anything else that's comparable um, or person objects, which you'll be writing in a moment. Um, it just knows how to sort things that are comparable. It doesn't care what the specific type is. That's the power of, of interfaces. So when we actually run this code now, when I run this test comparable method, I can see that the initial order was quarter, dime, nickel, and now the order is from least to greatest, nickel, dime, quarter. Um, that's why implementing an interface is so much, um, so powerful, so powerful. Let me show you another example, just to kind of reiterate this point of like, why do we care about interfaces? Why are interfaces useful? Um, here's a very simple interface that I wrote as an example. Um, it is a, uh, interface called measurable, okay? And this is in your BlueJ project as well. And the measurable interface simply has one method, get measure, and it returns a double, okay? We use, you know, to reiterate this point from yesterday, we use interfaces when we have otherwise unrelated classes that still have a common behavior, right? There are many things we might want to be able to measure that otherwise have no connection to each other. Um, so here's, here's an example of that. Um, here's a bank account class, okay? So we could have this bank account class implement the measurable interface because we wanna be able to measure the bank account and maybe the measure of a bank account is how much money is in the bank account. That could be one way we could do it. So we make our bank account measurable and, and the measure is how much money is in it. Another class that we might wanna make measurable is a country. There is no connection between a country and a bank account. Um, but they both have a shared behavior in that like, we'd like to be able to measure them. So we could say the country implements the measurable interface as well. And perhaps we decide that the measure of a country is its area, okay? How many square miles the country is, right? So even though country and bank account have nothing really in common, they still have a shared behavior in that we want to be able to measure them. 
And the value of that is then we could write a class like this class data. And this class data knows nothing about countries and knows nothing about bank accounts, but simply has a static method similar to the sort method of the collections class that takes an array of objects that are measurable. So that could be an array of countries, that could be an array of bank accounts. It doesn't care, it doesn't know anything about the specific class, it just knows that, hey, if you give me an array of any object, as long as that object implements the measurable interface, I know I can operate on it. I know I can write a little enhanced for loop that goes through every object in that array, I can call the get measure method on that object because it implements the measurable interface. I know I can call get measure and it will return a double. And I can sum that up and I can find the average and I can return that. And if we look at the BlueJ project window, we can even see here's the data class. The data class depends upon this, this little arrow here, the measurable interface, but there is no connection between the data class and country or the data class and bank account, right? Um, that's the power of the interface, right? We could write a third class, um, turtle, and we could decide to make turtles measurable. I don't know what we'd measure them based on, but whatever. Um, and that would still work with the data class without even having to recompile anything. Um, and so this measurable tester just gives you an example of like why this is useful in terms of creating, let's create an array of bank account objects, but they're all measurable. Um, and we can pass them to the average method of the data class. Um, let's create another array of countries. And we, the syntax is, is exactly the same. We can call the average method of the data class and pass in the array of countries, and it returns the average area. Okay. Um, so we can write code like the average method of this data class that we can then leverage for all sorts of different types of classes that otherwise have no relationship because they implement the same interface. Um, and that's the power of interface. That's the why. Why do we care about interfaces? Why do we use interfaces? Because it enables stuff like this. Um, that's a huge advantage that we're going for here. To help tie this a little bit together before we move on, I did wanna also just help and connect and share this, that there's a couple Java standard library interfaces that we've now been using, um, and there's more to come later this week. But um, yesterday we focused on the comparable interface. Honestly, that wasn't the first time that we've been using the comparable interface. The string class, implements the comparable interface. That's why the string class has a compare to method. Um, so we've been calling the compare to method last semester. Um, and, this, and what we were really doing is calling the compare to method in the string class that exists because the string class implements the comparable interface. Another example of an interface that we've been using um, without necessarily realizing it is the list interface. The array list class that we studied in our previous unit um, implements the list interface. Um, the reason why there's a list interface is that a list is a concept, has a certain set of behaviors, um, but there are multiple ways to implement a list. In the context of this class, we just care about array lists, but in software engineering, we study like linked lists. So the linked list class also implements the list interface. Um, so array lists and linked lists implement the same interface, um, but have very different implementations. Um, and the pros and cons of that is something we study in, in software engineering. Uh, but there's also the list interface that you may see. Later this week, we're gonna see that there is several interfaces that are used um, to implement different types of design patterns. Design patterns are, are common ways of solving problems that pop up over and over again in object-oriented programming. One of those is basically called the observer or the listener pattern. And it's the idea that when something happens, I want one of my methods to be called. Okay. This is at the very heart of doing graphical user interfaces, which is where we're headed later this week. When someone clicks this button, 
I want this method to be called. When someone chooses this menu item, I want this method to be called. When someone clicks and drags a mouse within this window, I want this method to be called. All of that is built around interfaces as well. So we'll be studying listeners um, later this week, tomorrow probably. We'll start looking at that. So I just wanted to connect this so that you're aware of, of um, these interfaces that are part of the Java standard library um, that have been hiding in the background, but now we have a better understanding of the, the role they play.